happy you've tuned in to the Retirement Education Hour. Welcome. Hi, I'm Megan Mozak, and it's always great to be back in the studio with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation, and we want you to listen up throughout the show today. We'll be telling you more about the Retirement Education Foundation's courses taught at major Michigan universities designed to give you a full download of what it takes to retire successfully in the 21st century. We want you to have a front row seat, so be listening for ways that you can secure your spot at the foundation's upcoming courses at a location near you. We have a great show lined up for you today. We're going to dive into a topic that really is generational. It can affect you. It can affect your children. It can affect your parents. And what we're talking about is elder abuse and financial exploitation. And, you know, Kirk and Paul, as we talk about this, we see the headlines, right? I think this is an issue where people say, you know what, it's not going to happen to me. And they kind of ignore it. And you say that's not a smart move. Why? Well, it's not a smart move because, Megan, this generation, that this baby boomer generation controls over 70% of the nation's wealth. We're going to ha- see the greatest transfer of wealth from you, the listener right now, the baby boomer, down to the children. It's, it's over $75 trillion. It's a massive amount of wealth. And there's just not enough information being shared with that $1 to $20 million family. There's a gap. If you've got over 20 million, you've got your own personal family offices helping you manage, navigate. You should have a team helping you. But that one to $20 million client doesn't. And this is where we see a tremendous amount of elder abuse. And today we're going to talk about a couple of things. We're going to give you the numbers, which I'm going to let Paul share some of these numbers in a minute. But also, what are things you need to be doing to help prevent it for yourselves? for your parents and then how do you it's it's that surviving spouse and you got a plan today to anticipate there's going to be problems because you are the target that one to 20 million dollar family is the target to elder abuse paul yeah you know and and kirk i think you know you when we use the word abuse nobody ever wants to think that they will ever be abused right i mean that that word we we always think it's other people right so I think part of the challenge with this topic is to get people to to sort of pay attention because I think naturally no one ever thinks they're going to be targeted. No one ever thinks they're going to be the person that's going to be exploited. And if that was the case, it wouldn't be a problem. And it's a massive problem, right? It's, you know, it, it costs every year. It's estimated $36 billion. It's not a small issue. It's a huge issue. And, and, you know, what you're saying, it's so true is, is that it's, you know, you have to start thinking about it now, planning for the future. And, you know, we get into this topic in our class. I know we're going to talk about a class in a minute, but this is a big topic that people have to start thinking about. Paul, I think some people are wondering, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm 50 year, 55 years old. I'm 60. I'm 65. Why am I even worrying about this? This, this, isn't gonna, this isn't an issue for me for a long time. Yeah, but the things you need to be doing right now is going to help you prepare the whole problem is there's a disconnect for the entire financial service industry in terms of truly providing education for that one to call it 20 million dollar family there is no education it's 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 the it's why one of the reasons why we we started the charity over 10 years ago to create that foundation to understand that i'm not an average baby boomer retiring with two hundred and fifty thousand dollars saved I have more than that. So I can spend more th- than, than the average baby boomer. I can spend at a higher percentage, right? Those 65-year-olds can take out that 6 7 8% withdrawal rates. And if they do it properly with zero chance of outliving their income, there's going to be a great transfer of wealth. Bigger issues, there's going to be a big transfer of wealth when the first spouse dies. And we don't know when these are going to happen. So you have to pr- plan right now. So we're going to encourage you to register for one of our eight-hour courses. Yes, it's eight hours taught over two evenings or one full Saturday taught at all the major universities here in Michigan now. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org. You know, Kirk, you said something I think I want to just highlight. You you know, the risk when one spouse passes away, the risk of, of being exploited goes up significantly. And often, often, 
it occurs when the spouse who passes away was the spouse who managed the money and the surviving spouse didn't, knew nothing about this. They weren't involved in this at all. And, and one of the things that, that I have seen is that these scammers have become incredibly sophisticated, right? Incredibly sophisticated. And, 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 and the truth is, if we are all somewhat vulnerable to this. Unless you're a technology wizard, right? These folks are really good at, at perpetrating without, you know, you realizing it. And, and, and it really is true when you have that surviving spouse who was not involved in the finances, was not involved in planning at all, never went to a class, never learned anything about finance, and then all of a sudden they're left with money and they don't know what to do. And they're vulnerable. They're emotionally vulnerable because they just lost their spouse. They know nothing about their finances and that's when bad things happen. You want to prepare now. And the, and the first start is getting educated and, and, and everybody needs to get educated. Paul, this is, you know, and I know we're going to drill deeper into because so you talked about some of the scams, the external scams that people are exposed to. The, the the scarier part to me is that almost uh, it's over 60 percent of the financial elder abuses is, is your family. It's it's being perpetrated by family members. And that may sound confusing. We'll go over it later because it, it is it, it can be subtle and it can get severe and it may not always be your children, but it may be the spouse of your children that might be perpetrating it. So we'll, we'll talk about that as we go along. I think one of the takeaways for today's class, I hope people can get their arms around is, is, is the purpose of our radio show. We're on every week, right? We're on every week promoting our eight hour educational courses at the major universities. And so the purpose of our show is to give you pieces of some of the information that we're going to cover in the class. The class is comprehensive. We're covering everything. But that whole concept of how can I, that $1 to $20 million family, have sort of a family office type of retirement plan where I'm fully efficient and maximizing everything and reducing the chances of anything bad happening. How can I have that experience? Well, it starts by attending one of the eight-hour classes that we're teaching at the University of Michigan, um, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both the Novi and Troy campus, and Oakland University. And we're also streaming them live from the university. So if you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Back with Kirk and Paul right after this. We're glad you've tuned into the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak, alongside financial instructors Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. Fantastic show for you today. We're really zeroed in on elder financial abuse and exploitation. This is a bigger problem than you might imagine. And today we're talking about ways that you can guard yourself and your family from this type of victimization. I want to make sure that you have the information you need also to get registered for the Retirement Education Foundation's upcoming retirement courses. These are master's level courses held at major Michigan universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both the Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. And registering is easy. Go to the website, Retirement Planning edu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also call to register 800-240-8981. Again, 800-240-8981. And we want to get back to our topic. Uh, But speaking of this show, I want to make sure our listeners know, Kirk and Paul, that they can find this program anywhere they find their favorite podcast. That's right. This program is also a podcast. You're welcome to listen again, share it with a friend who would find this information valuable. And today's show certainly is that valuable information, Kirk and Paul. We're talking about, as I said, elder abuse, financial exploitation. What group of people do you find could most likely become victims of this? You know, Megan, you know, it's funny because Paul brought this topic to it. We've done we've done segments on this topic. We've done partial shows in the past on this topic. To do a whole show on this topic, one of the worries I had, Megan, was that 
we're, we've, we know who our listeners are. Our listeners are that 50 to 65, that 50 to 70 year old. That's our core listener that listens to our show. We know they typically have around one to $10 million. That's who's been listening to our show. It's the same people who are coming to our classes. And my fear was, are they going to be able to connect with this topic today? Because no one thinks this is going to happen to them, especially when they're 50, 55, 60 years old. But it's our demos. It's the people who are listening to our show and the people who are coming to our classes are exactly the people who are most likely to be targeted. It is that one to $10 million family who tends to manage their own wealth. They're do-it-yourselfers. There's one of you that's usually primarily responsible for the finances in the house. And by the way, we get why you've done it yourself. Honestly, to this point, you probably should have been doing it yourself. You are in a group that there is no one that's really specializing in this one to 10, one to $20 million sort of family office that's really going to truly give you a 30-year guide of with tax projections for 30 years, finding the most efficient path mapping out what if one spouse predeceases the other what if there's a long-term care mapping out a whole plan no one's doing that for you so you've been doing it yourself but guys folks i shouldn't say guys folks it's you that are most likely to be targeted because your demo your ge- generation it, it, it's often the male that's that's doing it themselves and is responsible for the finances i'm not suggesting it's always that way but your demographic the baby boomers that's what we're seeing and the man is most likely to die first. And so we're leaving a surviving spouse that hasn't touched finances in a long time with some wealth. That's a target, Paul. We see it in our private practice. We've seen it everywhere. We have people coming through our classes. I've spoken on PBS about this a number of times doing specials around elder abuse. This is a problem. It is you, you, the listener right now, who is most likely to become a victim. And it just depends on when something happens. And how do you prepare it? It's now, right, Paul? It's through education. Yeah, no, I, I'm glad you, you said that because, you know, we actually, we've, we've seen this. Not, in, in fact, we've seen this not just with the people that attend our class. We've seen it personally. We know people, right, who, who the husband was a do-it-yourselfer, was confident, and, may, and maybe he did a good job, maybe they did good jobs, but they pass away, the surviving spouse, often the wife, never involved in any of the finances, all of a sudden has all this money, knows, has no idea what to do with it, never involved in it. They're vulnerable, emotionally vulnerable, and all of a sudden, whether it's family, friends, caregivers, acquaintances, professionals, scammers, before you know it, and it starts, it's subtle initially, right? It's not in your face before you know it things happen, right? So it's really about preparing for this in the future. And you're exactly right. It's the listeners. It's the do-it-yourselfers that are most at risk. You know, you said this earlier, and I'm glad you said it. My fear, just like your fear, is people are going to listen to this show, and they're going to tune it out. Men who are listening to this show in their 50s, 60s, they're going to tune this out because they think they'll never be the victim. But it is actually the people it's the men who are listening to this show whose wives are not involved in this. In particular, it's those do-it-yourselfers that really need to get educated, and they need to bring their, their, you know, their, their spouses along with it. Paul, I, I'm glad you said that. So first of all, I know uh, So we see elder abuse all the time, right? This particular story Paul's refer, uh, referring to is, is, is not a client. It's a, it's a family friend that we've known for many, 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 many years, and it, it, they weren't old. I think they were around 60 Early 60s. She was in her early 60s. She was in her 60s. Early 60s. Or early 60s. And it was millions of dollars, lost it all. Uh, grandchildren's college funds, lost the house, lost everything. It was terrible. I mean, in, in, I don't want it to sound and like she was it doesn't educa- And she was educated. She was a smart woman. Highly let me, educated. Let me be clear. Paul. Right. <laughs> Highly educated. One of the things that we teach in the class, and maybe next segment we'll talk about how common it is. I don't think people recognize how frequent it is, but one of the things I want to make sure we cover here right now is that one of the lessons in the class throughout the eight hours of education, master's level education, is that we teach you it's a two-player sport. It's not a do-it-yourself sport anymore. You get, you know, 50, 55 years old, 
Something could happen to that do-it-yourself. We've lost, I don't know how many clients in our private practice, 20, 30 clients in their uh, 60s last year. It's, it's incredible how many, I just that's one of the lessons, the takeaways in the class. And one of the things we force in the class is that both, if you're a married couple, you both need to engage and get involved and understand what your retirement plan looks like and have a mapped out plan telling you what to do, when to do it, if something happens, what you should be doing. That's what we're teaching in the class. This is, it's a master's level course. We have CEOs, CFOs for Fortune 500 companies coming to this class. We have pension fund managers for some of the biggest firms, JP Morgan and, and, and others sitting for this eight hour course. It's a, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll be back. There's plenty more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Back with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. Hi, everyone. Glad you're with us on the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak, talking today about elder abuse, financial elder abuse and victimization. This happens more than you might think. Today, Kirk and Paul are outlining why it happens, how it happens, and we're giving you ways to arm yourself so that you can protect your family, not just you, but your children your parents from being victims in this situation. It is very serious and it has deep impacts. We're going to continue that conversation in a moment. I want to make sure you have the website to get registered for the Retirement Education Foundation's upcoming master's level retirement courses. These are held at major Michigan universities. You can go to retirementplanningedu.org to register. Again, secure your seat at retirementplanningedu.org. Dot O-R-G. You can also call to get registered. That phone number is 800-240-8981, 800-240-8981. The courses are taught at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, the Novi and Troy campuses, or Oakland University. And I should also point out, if you'd like to attend virtually, you can do that. These courses are streamed live to make it even more convenient. So register today. And I want to get back to our topic. And speaking of this show, it is available anywhere you find your favorite podcast. So keep that in mind if you want to re-listen or share it with a friend. As we talk about elder financial abuse, just how common is this, Kirk and Paul? And who are the perpetrators? So it's remarkable. Uh, what is reported versus what's, what is, what's believed to be happening. So first, one in five people over the age of 70 are victims of, of financial elder abuse. That's one in five. But they say that only one in 24 cases of financial abuse is reported to the authorities. And there's a theory, I mean, not a theory, it, it's common sense why that's happening. But one in five victims of elder abuse with 60% of that elder, financial elder abuse being perpetrated being done by family, friends and family in, in over 60%. And he, here's, here's the disconnect for some people. Some people say, my children would never do that. And um, I'm sorry to say, it, it can be subtle at first. People, kids can get themselves in trouble. Once one of, the spouse, one of the parents die, there's things that can happen. More likely, more common is who is in control of the children's finances? Is it your child or is it your son or daughter-in-law? So there are so many reasons why this happens, Paul. It's sad. But I, I, there's so much of this isn't being reported. And guess who's not reporting it, Paul? It's the do-it-yourselfers. Why? Why do you think that is, Paul? Because they're do-it-yourselfers, right? They think they, uh, they can control everything, right? They, That's they, the reason. They do, and they don't want to give up control. It. They don't. They love control, and they don't like giving it up. Can, can I? Can I say one thing, Kirk? You you gave a statistic that I've always thought as well. One in five, right? I was in, in preparing for the show. I, I did some research. You know, actually, it's actually more. They they that's that's they're they're asked, actually believing that it's closer to thirty five forty percent. That's it's actually more prevalent than what we've always thought. And 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 part of that is COVID because people are more isolated. People aren't going out as much. People are, right, and isolation often leads to 
victimization. So over the last year or two, those numbers are are growing more and more. And and accurately, family, friends, caregivers, neighbors, right, often are the people over, you know, 60%. One, one group, if I can add, you said children, right? But so, sometimes what we see is one, one spouse passes away, the surviving spouse gets married. Yes, the surviving spouse gets married. I know people never think it's going to happen. Very common. Right? And they get married, and the new spouse all of a sudden convinces their spouse to change their will, right? Change their beneficiaries. So when we talk about family and friends, it's not just children. It could be a, a new spouse, right? It could be your neighbor. It could be a friend, right? It happens often by people that we know, not just by strangers. Very subtle. It can be done by undue influence. There's a, there's a number of things, Paul. You know, one of the, again, th- this is what we're teaching in the class, Paul, is that you one to 10, one to $20 million families, you got to approach this when you are about 50, 55 years old as uh, that you, you got to put your team together. You got to have a team and you have to map this out. It's got to be mapped out. It can't just be a bunch of spreadsheets because by the way, you're not going to be able to read the spreadsheets as you get older. Many of you cognitively will, the first skill that you're going to lose is mathematics. It's going to get more difficult. That's the other thing, Paul. Why do do it yourself first think? Like, you know, I'm too old to <laughs> I was work. waiting my, for this. Yeah, I'm too old to work for, do, as an engineer anymore. They want me out of my jobs. The, the, the airlines say you can't fly a plane at 65 years old, but you are going to be responsible for your finances as you age and cognitively change, things change and you become more and more vulnerable. That is, it's just setting yourself up to be taken advantage of. Even if you're not taken advantage of mistakes, so many mistakes that are avoidable, especially that one to $10 million family, you can develop your own like team. Where your CPA, your attorney, and your advisor, wealth managers, are, and planners are communicating together as one to make sure that when something happens, no one is taken advantage of. You're avoiding mistakes. The, this is part of the, this is why it's a master's level course. And we do teach you the math and a lot around taxes and a lot about how do I create the most efficient plan in retirement to take the most amount of income, pay as little tax as possible. But a lot of it's also, it's about when one of you dies, and we don't know when it's going to happen, that that surviving spouse is protected. There's a plan in place. It was done when you were both younger and cognitively capable of implementing and designing a plan. And then it avoids, it reduces the chances of the, the, the elder abuse and the mistakes when the, something happens to the first spouse. I, I just... It's so important. <laughs> You're getting a, bat, a lot of bad information, you one to $10 million people. You can live on more money. You can take your six, seven, eight percent out per year. You can s- protect your surviving spouse. You can have that retirement plan, retiring earlier. But you got to go to a course. You got to go through eight hours of education. That's why it's eight hours taught at all the major universities. You can go two evenings. During the week or one full Saturday, all you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Stay tuned. Kirk and Paul will be back right after this. This is the Retirement Education Hour. We're glad you've tuned in today. I'm here with Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. Have you registered yet? We want you to register and secure your seat at the foundation's upcoming retirement courses. These are master's level courses designed to help you feel more confident going into retirement. We believe you deserve a great retirement. It starts knowing how to plan for it. And believe me, this doesn't happen by accident or a hope and a prayer. You have to know the challenges you're up against here in the 21st century. And we know that this course is the best way to start. So here's how you register. You go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. You can also call to get signed up. 
800-240-8981. That's the phone number, 800-240-8981. These courses are taught online. They're streamed live, so you can watch in the comfort of your own home. Or, and we'd love to have you in person, they're taught at major Michigan universities. You can attend at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, both the Novi and Troy campus, or Oakland University. So call or go online to get registered today. And we've been talking about a great topic, elder abuse when it comes to your finances, how not to be a victim. And speaking of this program, we want to remind you that you can go back and listen to this program or any other episodes of the Retirement Education Hour. Simply search for Kirk Cassidy or the Retirement Education Hour to see a full list of episodes and be sure to share with a friend. So find that wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Kirk and Paul, I do want to dive back into this topic today of financial elder victimization You say that DIYers, those who do it themselves when it comes to financial planning, they're most at risk of being victims and making mistakes. Tell us more about that. Yes, Megan, I want to be careful here because we're actually proponents of uh, many of the people who have been doing it themselves throughout their, what we call their accumulation phase of their life. They didn't need to pay an advisor. Hopefully, many of them just bought index funds because that's really all they had to do. If they would have, they would have done better than they did. But honestly, the, com- the complexity doesn't come in until you're approaching retirement and in retirement. Once you're within you know, five to 10 years of retirement, because everything you do when you're within five to 10 years from retirement needs to be driven by your plan, your goals, your needs. You know, to quote Warren Buffett, like I think I do every show we do, you have to be insane to risk what you have for something you don't need. In other words, if you have what you need to give you what you want, then then what are you doing, right? So for many of you, by the way, you're working because you're doing it yourself. And and again, you're listening and reading and you're, I know you're well educated. I know you've had some success. I know you're engineers. I, we we know who listens and we know who comes to our classes. They're the CPAs, the attorneys, the doctors, the engineers, the executives, the CEOs, CFOs. We, we know who's listening to the shows and coming to the classes. We get it. You're, you're well-informed and you do a lot of research, but there's not much information for you if you're between $1 to $20 million that is helpful for you. Everything that you read and listen to is about spending less, protecting your principal, creating fear so you spend less. So the financial service industries can make more. The less you spend, the more they make. So you do it yourself. There are so many problems with trying to do this at this stage of your life because there are so many levers you got to pull. There's so much conflicting information all along. You're getting older and cognitively things are changing. And Paul, you being a doctor of psychology, specializing in, in the elderly, Yeah, you know exactly what I'm saying here, and you can explain it a lot better than I can. No, no, but no, I I think you're doing a great job. I I think there's there's a dynamic. If I can just say this, Kirk, I think there's a dynamic with do-it-yourselfers that we often see between the spouses, and people don't like to see this. They don't like to admit it. They don't like to talk about it. But here's the dynamic I think we see often. Right? It is very hard for the spouse of a do-it-yourselfer at some point. It's very hard because on the one hand, they appreciate all that that do-it-yourselfer spouse did to get them to that point. They love them. They appreciate it. They know that they wouldn't be there if it wasn't for them. But at some point, at some point, they fear that that spouse is going to make a mistake. The dynamic is they don't want to, tell, they don't want to admit it. They don't, want to, they don't want to confront that spouse, the do-it-yourselfer spouse. They don't want to say anything. They don't want to hurt their feelings. I see, we've seen this so often in people that attend our class where that spouse who's not the financial wizard comes and says, you know what? I'm really worried that my, you know, it's often husband is going to make a mistake, but I don't want to say anything to him. I don't want to hurt their feeling. So often they don't say anything. And at some point mistakes happen. It's really important. It's really important. If you're a do it yourself or, and you have a spouse who knows nothing about this, you need to recognize they're probably at some point going to worry, but they're not going to say anything to you. 
Oh, they will. And, because it's not just worrying about the mistake. It's also worried about the the death, the incapacitation. Exactly. The, the dementia, the Alzheimer's, the stroke, whatever it exactly. could be that may happen to them. What are they going to do? Right. They feel more when you're they're younger, especially if there's no financial infidelity. And we, we just did a show on that. Or, or Michael just was on TV talking about about this financial infidelity. But as long as we don't have that issue, there's a trust. But the it's not a trust thing. It's really it's an aging thing. And and it just gets more complicated, more confusing. There's more anxiety. No one else is sending you a paycheck anymore to pay your bills. Once you retire and you start to age, you have to pay your own bills out of your dollars. And when do I take money from which accounts at what age? How much money can I take out in a, in a year? When can I actually retire? How do I pay as little tax as possible? How do I protect that surviving spouse? Because you know, do it yourselfers. They do these cost benefit analysis on whether they should take a single pay on their pension or a 50% survivor benefits. And then they're when to take Social Security, and they just assume that that surviving spouse is going to need less income, but they don't realize that surviving spouse is going to pay a lot more taxes and have less income because they go from married filing joint to single. They don't understand that the one to $20 million client, that single surviving spouse, their, ta- their Medicare premiums are going to go up because it's means tested, and for a single person, it cuts in half. There are all kinds of traps and mistakes these do-it-yourselfers who have resources that can have much better outcomes if they just come to an eight-hour class. Come to an eight-hour class. It's a master's level class at all the major universities. Forbes has done an article about our charity and the class we're teaching. Just make a $29 donation to charity and you can register for one of these courses at the universities. To register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That is retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll return more with Kirk and Paul right after this. We're happy you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour today. I'm Megan Mozak. It's a pleasure to be alongside financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're both with the Retirement Education Foundation. And we've been telling you about the foundation's courses. These are taught all year round at major Michigan universities. And we want you to attend. You can find a date and location that works best for you by going to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And keep in mind that these courses are taught at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi or Troy Campus, and Oakland University. So find that location, secure the date, get your front row seat, do that at the website retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. So how do you combat elder financial victimization? That's what we've been focused on here on the show today. This is a generational issue. Kirk and Paul have been talking about how you can really defend yourself against this, help your family defend themselves as well. It's been a fascinating conversation. I want to remind you that this episode and several others are available wherever you find your podcasts. Just search for Retirement Education Hour and you'll get that list. Be sure to listen, share with a friend. You know, as we talk about this issue, I know that Kirk and Paul The very unique thing about these courses that we've been talking about that the foundation sponsors, really the the instructors there are, are having an opportunity to talk to the participants in the audience to really encourage their parents who might be at risk for some of this, who might be vulnerable to take action. Describe that in the classes. Yes, Megan, we we've started to do this. It's something we're focusing more frequently on. Because we're, to be honest, it's in our private practice, we're seeing more and more issues around, it's not just financial elder abuse, but that transition of the wealth, right? What is the most effective way to transfer that wealth? And so one of the, you know, we spend a little bit of time in the course talking about the importance of, okay, you've got to put your own team together and we help you to identify How do I do background checks on the right advisors, the right teams? What does a real plan look like? Is someone just showing me e-money or 
money guide pro probability like what does really a retirement plan look like for that one to 20 million dollar client because it's different for you it should be different and it should be customized for you i know in our private practice paul when we build a plan for somebody it's 50 60 hours just to design the plan then we have to implement the plan again we operate more like a family office where we have a cpa our attorney the wealth manager and the financial planner all working in coordination with one another. We're trying to give you that concept of what that should look like for that one to 10, one to $20 million client to create and produce best outcomes for your retirement, get you retired earlier, get you more income in retirement to pay a lot less taxes, hundreds of thousands in many cases, less in taxes. That's why it's an eight hour master levels course. And what, Something new we've introduced is the importance of, okay, the 50 to 70 year old that's typically come into our classes, that 50 to 70 year old, you have parents, many of them still have parents alive and they are likely, well, let me, let's rephrase this. They've got a 37% chance of being a victim of elder abuse. So what are some of the things you can help with to avoid and reduce that? And that's about getting them with your attorney, getting them with your financial team, getting them with your CPA so there's guardrails to protect your parents to avoid these mistakes. And, and Paul, it's the transfer of the wealth is important too because if you are properly planning, a lot of it's around taxes, what you inherit, how you inherit it, and the flexibility of when you inherit it is going to be in critical when you get your money from your parents when they pass. So this yeah, is becoming know, more and more important. No, you know, I think I think it's uh, this this whole subject of, you know, people in their 50s, 60s who have parents who have wealth. And how do you have a conversation with them to make sure they're protected? And oftentimes in these families, people don't like to talk about money. People don't like talk, you know, they don't, they, they, everyone feels uncomfortable, but it's really important because most of the people that come to our class have parents who have a reasonable amount, amount, amount of wealth that that 15, 6 year old is going to inherit. And it's important that you talk to that parent and make sure they're, you know, they have everything in order. And oftentimes people don't like to do that. And, and this is where abuse happens. This is where exploitation happens. And again, how do you have those conversations? How do you talk to the, your, your parents about this? How do you make sure your parents are protected? Is something that we talk a lot about in our classes, something that's really important to think about. Right. It's that generational transferring of wealth, right? It's, it's, huge. it's not it's a huge. It, it's, it's your parents to you. It's then you to your children. Exactly. In our private practice, this is a major component. That's that that family office concept. You all don't think you you know that one to ten million dollar uh, uh, family. There's there's not a family off a true family office that exists for you because you don't have the resources to pay a real family office. But that doesn't mean you can't have like a a light version of it. You can understand conceptually. You can almost create it yourself by building your own teams. But if you're going to build these teams, then your parents need to be in the team and your children need to get into the team. So there, this, this avoids the elder abuse. This avoids the tax mistakes. This, this avoids family fights and family dynamics and family issues because everything gets coordinated then. So, Paul, I think one of the big disconnects for that 50, that 50 and 60-year-old especially, that they're still just thinking about the next couple of years. They're still just thinking about the next two, three, five years. And that is because that's all they've done to accumulate their wealth. And it's been very successful for them. Now everything needs to be built out in a 25, 30 year view, right? It, 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 it's got to literally be mapped out for 25, 30 years to know what I should be doing today because I understand what's going to happen and what things will look like in 20, 25 years. And then I know what my parents should be doing for me and then what I should be doing for my children. It's got to be more holistic and it's got to be bigger. And the problem for the one to, that one to 10, one to $20 million family, there's no one out there doing this for you. No one's even talking this language to you. We're the only one I'm telling you, we've been searching. This is why we have the courses. This is why the charity was founded over 10 years ago to provide these more advanced retirement planning courses for specifically for you. All you have to do to attend is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, it's a one-day, eight-hour course or two evenings. 
four hours each evening. All you have to do is uh, register to register is go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. And we'll return. More with Kirk and Paul is coming up right after this. Happy you've joined us for the Retirement Education Hour today. Great topic. Uh, as we've explored elder financial abuse, how to protect yourself, your children, your parents. And really, this is a, a show that has actionable steps. And speaking of actionable steps, we want you also to register for the foundation's upcoming courses on retirement planning. These are deep dives, master's level courses, if you will, on retirement planning. So necessary here in the 21st century for a successful retirement. And the Retirement Education Foundation sponsors these throughout the year. They are held at major Michigan universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi and Troy Campus, and Oakland University. So it's your choice, either a two-day course or a one-day course. Go to the website for more information and to register, retirementplanningedu. Dot org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. The phone number is 800-240-8981. And remember, if you're listening to our show today and you'd like to go back and listen again or share this episode, you can do so. You can find it any place that you get your podcast. You can listen to previous episodes and share with a friend. Just search for Retirement Education Hour. So getting back to our topic at hand today, you know, elder abuse, it's sad. The good news is it's preventable. How can this be prevented, though, Kirk and Paul? Well, the answer is always the same. If we, For our listeners, uh, and we, I know we have many of you listeners been listening to us for a long time. The answer is a comprehensive 30-year retirement plan with the right team, right? So, so here's the challenge. Uh, we've got people listening to us for years and they still for whatever reason have chosen not to attend an eight hour master's level course at a major university you've got one to ten one to twenty million dollars and for some reason you th can't see the value of better educating yourself this is an advanced course now so i get it we, we are the ceos the cfos we've got a lot of retired athletes and and high power executives that don't always want to be seen in public coming to the classes live at the universities. We tend to see those people who will stream the classes. Often after streaming the classes, as we're teaching in live, they decide to come back to an in-person class because the class is better in person without a question. But I understand you don't know what you're getting into. It's a fully educational course to teach you how to build a retirement plan. That's what it is. And what is a retirement plan? A retirement plan is going to tell you when you can retire, how much income you can have. By the way, if you're in your 60s, that magic number is not 4%. You can, if you do this properly and you have $1 to $10 million, you can take 6 7 8% per year with zero chance of outliving your income. If you build this comprehensive plan, it tells you when to take income from which accounts, where to take your income from during times of market volatility. The secret isn't trying to change your portfolios in time markets or stock pick. The secret to success is eliminating something called sequence of return risk and taking income from the right sources, the right accounts during the different market events, during the different times and market conditions. And then you have to map out taxes. A lot of this, Paul's around taxes. And you have to project out forward in your 70s, what is your tax, effective tax rates going to be? And then you work backwards to figure out what your effective tax rate is today. And then how do I find the most efficient path through my 25-year retirement to pay as little taxes as possible? Because the less taxes I pay, the longer my money lasts and reduces the chances of outliving my money. Then there's long-term care. There's what happens when one spouse predeceases the other spouse. Go to the website. You'll see we walk through a webinar showing you what a, a retirement sample retirement plan looks like for a $2 million client. That's what we're showing you. $2 million family, we're showing it to you. Go look at it, and then you'll see what we're teaching in the course. Just go to retirementplanningedu.org and look at the, the webinar on a retirement plan. That's what we're teaching, Paul. 
What do we have to get people yeah, to I, wake up? I, I hope people hear my frustration. People have listened to this for years. They're still not going. You know, I, I, as you're saying that, Kirk, I'm, I was thinking. I should say we have thousands of people go every year. I, I, to be fair, but sorry to interrupt, Paul. No, I was, I, I was just going to say that we should do a whole show on why people don't come to the class. Because you're absolutely right. It's fascinating to me that for $29, you can get a, eight, you know, a, a, a comprehensive course teaching you how to build a retirement plan, not just to protect you from abuse and victimization, but so that you don't make mistakes, so you have the best retirement possible. Why would someone not do it? I, I think you, you sort of you know, alluded to it. Ego. People don't, you know, don't like to admit they need help, right? They, you know, the average do-it-yourselfer thinks they can do it and do it forever. At the end of the day, we get educated on everything. Why people choose not to get educated on one of the most important things in their life is beyond me, but it happens, right? So, you know, take control. If you want to take control of your finances, become knowledgeable. Knowledge is power, right? Knowledge gives you power. So, Paul, two things. One is... Another reason why I think people sometimes don't go is they're afraid they're going to be sold something. This is a charity. This that's is a fair, charitable that's program. Fair. Yeah. Right? And you're making a donation of $29. It's a charitable program. It's an educational event. Nothing's being sold to you. It's 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 eight hours of education. Not a dinner. There's no dinner it's, here. It's comprehensive. And, and if you can't answer these questions, you need to come to the class. It's that simple. Do you know when you can, when you can afford to retire? Do you know how much income you can take out? Per year. Do you know what accounts you should be taking from and when? When to take Social Security? What Social Security uh, pension or lump sums? Do you know how much you can have, when you're going to take it, from which accounts, what's going to happen when one spouse dies, and how will you behave when we have four to seven major market events throughout your retirement? Because that's how, how many times it's going to happen throughout your retirement. Through a 30-year retirement, you're going to have four to seven major market events. How will you behave? I know how you're going to behave. You don't, right? Attend an eight-hour course. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Investment advisory services are offered by Strategic Investment Advisors, Inc., an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.